More than two decades ago, two experts in computer graphics created a render engine that was like no other. It was at the level of V-Ray, RenderMan, and the others at the time. It was a tool so powerful and beloved to the extent that artists still talk about it to this day. But what is this render engine? What made it popular? And the most important question, if it was so popular and successful, why does it no longer exist today? This render engine is called Brazil RS. Once upon a time, Brazil used to be a commercial plugin for Autodesk VIS, in addition to Rhino 3D and 3D Studio Max, the main software where it made quite a name for itself. However, that aside, sometimes when I talk to other 3D artists about this render engine and I mention the name of Brazil RS, they often say it must be from Brazil, right? And believe me, I thought the same too when I first heard about it around 2008 or 2009 or something like that. But the history behind the name is a very interesting one. The story of the software started under the hands of Steve Backman and Scott Corvin, two industry veterans who began the development of a render engine while working at Blur Studio, a prestigious VFX studio that was part of many blockbusters such as Deadpool, Avengers, and Sonic the Hedgehog, just to name a few. But the studio is also popular in the video game development industry. In the year 2000, Scott departed from Blur to go on in his journey of doing various freelance work and technical consulting for film and television productions. Meanwhile, he started playing around with GI and Ghost, the predecessor of Brazil, which was a software that was creating a lot of hype in the CG community. And by 2001, they felt like it was the right time to join forces again and form Splatterfish to sell and market the Brazil render engine as a photorealistic rendering engine. Now, how did the name Brazil become a thing? In a 2003 interview with Scott on the CGChannel.com website, he mentioned how the ghost name was quickly dropped after they ran into a trademark conflict. And after going through a long list of options without finding anything they liked, they decided to switch to place-based code names like Chicago or Cairo since it was a concept they were fans of. So they looked at the map and spotted Brazil, and they thought it was short, memorable, and had a nice ring to it. Actually, the credit for picking the name goes to Steve's stepsister, and once they heard it, they all felt it was the right name for their product. And that's how the story of the name came about. But what about the software itself, and how good it really was? Back in the day when Brazil was still just in its early stages, the team wanted to aim for the stars and produce unrivaled software that could meet the demands of the highest level of rendering. I mean, for things like film, broadcasting, or visualization, and to do that, they had to hit hard, with global elimination and ray tracing. I know, it doesn't look that impressive nowadays, but please remember that we are talking about an era when computer graphics weren't as impressive as they are today. Now, it might sound shocking, but when the engine was released at the dawn of the millennium in 2002, the early beta of the tool was what gave 3D Studio Max users the first taste of GI, or global illumination, a type of rendering that is based on a group of algorithms that attempts to simulate how light behaves in the real world. But not only considering the light that comes from light sources, such as the sun, but also how the other surfaces reflect the light. All the while, being combined with ray tracing, a technique for rendering physically accurate lighting to produce things like reflections, refractions, and shadows. To put the icing on the cake, Brazil also offered a collection of advanced shaders which made it an incredible player in this genre. And while there are many for us to count, we had shaders like Glow Shader, a semi-transparent one that went by the name of Ghost, and a car paint shader that provided a nice way to calculate shiny surfaces, well, at least back then it did. The engine also had a multi-threaded design and was able to use multiple workstations at once for rendering. In addition to all the bells and whistles, like HDRI support, photo mapping, or subsurface scattering, a way to simulate how light penetrates a translucent surface like human skin, among many other features. It goes without saying that the engine kept evolving throughout the years and was gradually equipped with more tools to take on any challenges along the way. 
thanks to its easy interface, expandable nature, and the capacity to give artists the ability to focus on artistic work rather than trying to deal with any technological headaches or issues because the engine was very stable. Scott put it best when he said Brazil's design was the result of years of brainstorming and dreams about making a powerful rendering engine that was also carefully put together. And during its time, very few ray tracers could even come close to its performance and speed. From the community perspective, users have instantly loved the engine since its beta days. And this trend continued even after the commercial release, thanks to the constant communication with the 3D community, which really helped the development process. And at the forefront of this were architectural artists and visualization professionals, who were considered to be a significant portion of their client base. The fascinating part is that the success was so incredible that it forced the team to hire Archivist experts to ensure that the needs of the clients were being met. However, while everything seemed to be working smoothly on the outside, behind the scenes, there was a storm in the making. But what is it all about? After many years, like how it is the case with most software companies in the industry, the fateful day has come. You know, they had to get acquired by a bigger fish. At this time, the situation is no different. So in 2008, Splatter Flash was acquired by Caustic Graphics, who began to rewrite Brazil using Caustic's OpenRL API. Simply put, it was a way to fully exploit the ray tracing hardware of the Caustics with it, and the new render engine was initially publicly called Brazil 3.0 SD. However, that didn't last too long, because Caustics themselves were consequently acquired by Imagination Technologies in 2010 for $27 million. And about this deal, Hossein Yassi, CEO of Imagination at the time said, Ray tracing is a key technology that traditionally has been regarded as the exclusive domain of specialized markets and non-real-time applications. We intend to change that. In other words, they wanted to bring ray tracing to mainstream, but how did that go? In May 2012, to the surprise of many, Imagination Technologies dropped a bombshell by announcing that they were pulling the plug on Brazil. In an announcement they made in their user forum at the time, they revealed that they would stop selling the software and they will shut down the forums alongside the Splatterfish website itself. And if you are wondering why, honestly, even over a decade later, the situation is still confusing because Imagination never explained their reasons and many fans are still scratching their heads over that move. Based on that, the best thing we can do is speculate. And it is just my two cents. But right before Brazil was abandoned, they released this thing called PowerVR Brazil SDK. It's basically a toolkit that lets software developers add ray tracing rendering functionalities to their applications. And it was built on Brazil itself, in addition to OpenRL rendering API. The idea was to use this technology to add high-level ray tracing functionalities to both software and future hardware accelerated platforms. And well, Essentially, they just did that, more or less. And after a few years later, in 2014, Imagination announced the PowerVR Wizard GPU family, which is essentially an architecture a manufacturer can follow to produce ray tracing GPUs, based on the years of experience they have gathered on this specifically, which is, in a way, a continuation of Brazil SDK and the plan they prefer to go with instead. But it is just my evaluation of the situation. So let us know what you think in the comment section down below. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.